I'd like to bring to order the Monday, September 10th meeting of the Tiverton Town Council. Please stand for the Pledge of Allegiance. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Mrs. Mellon. Councilor Perry. Present. Councilor Shabbat. Present. Council Ryan. Present. Uh, Councilor De Medeiros. Present. Councilor Edwards. Present. Councilor LeBeau. Yep. Uh, Councilor Hilton is absent. At this time, I'd like to call uh, the fire chief up with the presentation of the fire department Hot Saber Hero Awards. Thank you very much, Madam President. Um, members of the council tonight, I'm very honored to be standing in front of you. Um, we do have in, with us some of the uh, people who these awards directly affect. They are citizens of the town of Tiverton. Um, if I may start, Heart Saver Award is given also by the Heart Association, where they are also will be receiving this evening department commendations. When I say I believe our fire department and our rescue is second to none, I absolutely believe that. Um, we have one of the greatest departments, um, particularly when they are on EMS. In the past, I've come before the council and we've talked about cardiac arrest, say pre-hospital cardiac arrest is when a sudden uh, stoppage of the heart occurs outside of the hospital setting. It's usually followed by a chain of survival, which the Heart Association talks about, which is uh, citizen bystander CPR, followed up by uh, either BLS level care or advanced cardiac or paramedic, in our case, paramedic level care, and then that person is transferred to a hospital. Um, this town in itself, going just for this year alone, we've had at least four cardiac arrest saves, people who have been uh, deceased on the side of the road and um, the members you see in the back of the room have used their skills, their training and their knowledge uh, to sustain a life. Uh, when we say sustain a life to the point that they have walked out of the hospital and are still present with us now. Um, so I have three that I'd like to give. There is still one that we're still waiting on. Uh, but at this time, let me give you a little scenario. This one happened back in January of this year. Engine 2 and Rescue 3 responded to uh, an address in town. I'm for medical reasons, I can't give out the names and any of the uh, identifying information. To a report of a female with difficulty breathing. Upon arrival of Rescue 2, the female was found outside supine, in other words, face down on the front steps, unresponsive. Patient displays agonal respirations, followed by respiratory arrest and cardiac arrest. Chest, per chest compressions initiated approximately one minute with CPR. Patient placed on a stretcher taken to the rescue. CPR continued, ventilated. Uh, the bag valve mask was used, an oral airway placed. An auto pulse is a machine that we have that um, compresses their chest for them. Um, and it goes on, but basically they converted this person to a sustaining rhythm, and this person is alive and still with us today because of that, a citizen of the town of Tiverton. Um, for that end, I would like to ask that come up would be Captain Craig Camito, Lieutenant Peter Manchester, Christopher Wells, and Barry Moss, who were on that particular call at that time. Some of the mem members that are here tonight will be coming up several times. They've been on, on multiple calls where they have had uh, cardiac safety. I'm sorry? I won't hug them several times. Oh, that's okay. That's all right. Um, the next is, um, and we do have this, this individual here this evening, and with their permission, we can uh, uh, give a little bit more information. Uh, this one just recently happened in, in uh, the end of July. It was actually uh, quite dramatic for everyone involved, the family, and this one truly um, shows the chain of survival where bystander CPR, there were a lot of um, medical professionals, off-duty nurses and such that were there and the family members who knew CPR and absolutely without question made the difference in this life um, and hopefully this gentleman, this young gentleman will come up and be part of this with us. Um, the call was for a child not breathing at the bottom of a pool. 
There was a family potty occurring. Uh, they had helped to bring the child to the side of the pool by standard CPR was started. Uh, and upon arrival of the rescue, um, they had a sustaining rhythm. They had a conscious and alert crying child. Um, and I get a little emotional about it, but again, this is what my guys do on a regular basis. They do this without thinking about it. Their training and everything uh, makes a difference to have this young gentleman that you see behind us who was, for all intents and purposes, deceased. Um, the family, the friends, everyone that was here, this is a whole community that made a difference for this child and his life and how he is going to be a sustaining member of our community as we go forward. Um, we have some Hot Saver Awards for the family members that were here. Uh, Dave, do you have those? Do you, want, do you want to speak after and do that? Yeah, why okay. don't we do it? All right. So for the fire department, again, uh, Captain Bruce Rimels. Captain's not here tonight. Lieutenant William Piniccia, who is also a uh, registered nurse and an ER nurse. Uh, Firefighter Anthony Moretti. Firefighter Donald Clark. Uh, Patrick Gorman, who could not be here this evening. And firefighter Jason Sargent. Jason is one of our new firefighters that has just joined us. God bless him. He can give him. And lastly, the most recent cardiac arrest that we had just happened a couple of weeks ago. I'll let everybody get that. That's, that's a moment. And recently, our most uh, recent one occurred on the 21, uh, 21st of August, uh, where rescue responded on a call. Um, engine and rescue, uh, the engine and other companies had gotten called away to a fire at the, main, at the same time. Rescue one arrived on scene. Uh, they started treating a patient. And during that treatment, the patient went into cardiac arrest. Um, they removed the patient from the home, brought him to the truck. And with the teamwork that they involved, they brought that person back around and had a sustainable rhythm. That person, last I knew, was uh, still doing very well at Rhode Island Hospital uh, and somewhat out of critical care at this point in time. So again, I'm so proud of th these men and what they do that uh, I want to share that with all of you. So Captain Bruce Reimels. Oh, OK. Uh, Lieutenant Robert Gagnon. Firefighter Daniel Murphy. Firefighter Anthony Moretti. I don't think TJ's here. Firefighter Patrick Gorman. Michael, firefighter Michael Lattiso. And firefighter Jason Sargent. Again, Madam President, thank you very much for allowing us to do this. I think it's a reflection of the service that the community receives. Um, and how do you repay for a life? Here's, uh, here's what we do on a regular basis. I know that uh, Mr. Capral would like to say something, if possible. Well, I think I'm going to have David give David say? his okay. hot savers, and then Manny will speak. Oh, I'm sorry. You're right. oh it's okay. That's okay. I gotta <laughs> That's all right. We twisted everything up for you. Um, so for those of you, I guess, for the record, uh, David Paul, I'm one of the uh, two heart safe Tiverton coordinators. Um, the chief had covered his guys uh, fairly well, um, but part of Heart Safe Community is also recognizing those in the community that get involved in an event like this. And as the chief explained earlier with um, little James, uh, we do have Heart Saver Hero Awards for his family, um, for those of those family members that were his rescuers that day. Um, because without a doubt, without that bystander CPR, there's a really good chance he wouldn't have been with us today. So uh, James is with me. 
So I do have the Heart Saver Hero Awards for James's family to hand out. Um, one thing I did want to point out as well is that um, some of these awards are for the chain of survival itself. Um, recognition of a cardiac arrest or recognition in this case of that drowning event, um, the action that's taken to m remove that child from the pool, um, the initial rescue breaths, the CPR itself. So all of that plays a part in the, uh, in the chain of survival. So. All right. Where are you, little guy? So as I call you up, if you just want to come up, receive your Heart Saver Hero Award and a little gift from, uh, from James on behalf of the fire department. Uh, Kristen Rosebrock. Is Kristen here too? Lucas Anselmo. This one here, I believe, is a little close to him. Uh, Justin Castano. We have um, John Castano as well. Last four here, um, from what I understand, from what I'm told from the family, as much as they can remember, as you can imagine, everything was a flash. Um, these were the four, as far as the hands-on goes, with the uh, resuscitation efforts. Uh, Rose Lavier. Karen, is it Correa or Correa? Correa. Correa. Thank you. <laughs> Jamie DeMello. <laughs> and last but not least, Sarah Castano. Perfect. Um, and, and as I mentioned before, it's, it's the definition of Heart Safe community. Heart Safe was obtained uh, late 2016. Uh, we've held several CPR classes uh, sponsored by various in the town. Uh, one of the things I did want to point out as well with this particular event, it came to our attention. Um, obviously, there's a rescue report on file, uh, but the family wanted to make a positive out of this. And one of the things that they asked for was a community CPR class. So the beginning of August, we held a uh, CPR class, again, sponsored by Tiverton Fire Department and Heart Safe Community. Uh, there were 40 people in attendance at that class, which puts 40 additional bystander rescuers out there in the community. So they did a great job with that. So. Right. Danny. Okay, just, just, just in closing. Uh, it, it was a traumatic event, it, it, as you well know. I just wanted to thank the Tiverton Fire Department and the Tiverton Police Department for their fantastic response and their professional response through this whole deal. And uh, w without the everyday efforts of the Fire Department and the Police Department, you wouldn't have these kind of, uh, these kind of uh, ceremonies. So I just wanted to thank the both departments. Thank you. Thank you. I'm just going to take a five minute recess right now while um, people talk. Pitches. Whatever, pitches, whatever they want to do.
Okay. At this time, um, I would like to have a moment of silence for 9-11, and also for the recent passing of John C. Mello, who was a retired uh, police chief here. Um, he retired here in 1981. Okay, consent agenda. Approval of regular session council meeting minutes, August 27, 2018. Receipt of minutes from following boards and commissions. The Board of Canvases, four. The Cemetery Commission, one. Harbor and Coastal Water Management, two. Correspondence received and filed. Uh, Activity and Preve Prevention Coalition. Approval of tax assessor abatements. Town Administrator, Department Monthly Reports for August. Town Administrator, Police and Fire Overtime Reports for August. At this time, would any members of the council like to take anything off the consent agenda? Madam President. Council Edwards. I'd like to make a motion to approve the consent agenda. Second. I have a motion and a second. Any further discussion? All those in favor? Unanimous. Open public forum. Announcements, comments, and questions. Julie Bonato, um, solo ordinance and petition. Yes, please come up to the microphone. I need you to state your name and address, please. Hello, my name is Julie Monifo, and I'm from Jamestown, Rhode Island, 18 Calvert Place. And um, Madam uh, President, I am here today to present to you um, the, the idea that I am um, petitioning the town council to consider amending their solar ordinance and um, reason being that things are changing very quickly with um, the information that we're learning about um, solar facilities and the impact that they have on uh, the rural nature of towns like Tiverton. I, I received your request, but I wasn't able to put it on this agenda. Yes. I am planning on putting it on the following agenda in September. Thank you very much. You're welcome. All right. Thank you for your time. Thank you. Public hearings, advertised public hearings, proposed amendment to town code of ordinance, chapter two, administration, article five, finance, division two, purchasing, section 2106, competitive bidding. Peter. So this um, uh, this uh, ordinance amendment would just amend the uh, small purchase amount uh, for your uh, competitive competitive bidding ordinance to uh, come into line with state law. Um, so state law sets a small purchase amount for five thousand dollars for purchases and ten thousand dollars for uh, construction purchases. That's adjusted for inflation. Um, so. Uh, that, um, that what it actually comes to would be slightly over $8,000 uh, for uh, regular purchases and uh, slightly over $17,000 for construction. At this time, um, does any of the councilors have any questions or comments? <coughs> At this time, I'd like to open the public hearing. Anyone from the audience like to speak on this subject? Anyone from the audience? I'll, I'll now close the public hearing. Any questions and comments from the council once again? Madam President. John. I'd like to make a motion to approve the amendment to the Town Code of Ordinances, Chapter 2, Administration, Article 5, Finance, Division 2, Purchasing, Section 2-106, Competitive Bidding. I'll second it. Motion's been made and second. Any further discussion? All those in favor? Unanimous. Joseph Zabinski, 204 Stafford Road, wedding to be held at 958, I can never say the street name, Puggetist, Puggetist Neck Road on Saturday, September 22nd from 10 a.m. to 12 a.m. Approval of a sound variance live band to 5 p.m. and appro approval of a special <coughs> event license. Is Joseph here? Yes, thank you. Would you like to come up? Sure. Hi. Hi. We, um, just give us a little brief summary of what the wedding, when it starts, when it ends. And oh, sure. Okay. okay. So approximately how many people? Yeah. Yeah. So we're gonna we're expecting to have uh, around 175 people to include the staff, uh, staff and guests. 
we're going to, uh, the wedding ceremony is going to take place at 11 a.m., uh, but that's, that's going to be off-site. That's going to happen at Holy Trinity Church on Main Road. Then, um, then following that, we'll be headed to uh, 958 Punkatees Neck Road, hopefully for the, for the reception. Um, we're going to have a, uh, there's going to be an outdoor tent. Uh, we've already covered the building permit for that. Uh, we're going to have it catered. Um, the caterer has uh, liability insurance, everything that she needs there. Um, what we're, you know, we're looking for the the sound variants for uh, for the live band that we're gonna that we'd like to hire to entertain our guests. Any questions from the council? Madam President. I have to open. The oh, sorry. <laughs> Jumping the gun. Sorry. I apologize. <laughs> At this, time, at this time, I'd like to open the public hearing. Anyone in the audience like to speak on this subject? Anyone in the audience? I'll close the public hearing. Uh, we'll do 2A first, approval of sound variance live band to 5 p.m. Madam President, my motion to approve the sound variance uh, for the live band to 5 p.m. for Joseph Zabinski, 204 Stafford Road, uh, for 90, 958 Punkatees Neck Road on Saturday, September 22nd from 10 a.m. to 12 a.m. Second. I have a motion and a second. Any further discussion from the council? All those in favor? Unanimous. Madam President, I'd also like to make a motion to approve the special event license for Joseph Zabinski, 204 Stafford Road, for the wedding to be held at 958 Punkatees Neck Road on Saturday, September 22nd from 10 a.m. to 12 a.m. Second. Motion's been made and second. Any further discussion? All those in favor? Unanimous. Congratulations, and I hope everything goes well. Thank you very much. Hey, that's my first door. Town Council sitting at the Board of Lights is saying, Shireen Majamara, DBA Fancy Corner Store, 432 Main Road, request approval for tobacco and holiday license. Is he present? No. Nancy, anything special? No. Um, no, he receives his licenses from the state. All he needs from the town of Tiverton is a holiday, holiday and a tobacco. And we wouldn't be issuing it until everything is in anyway. Any questions from the council? Madam President. Council Edwards. I'm going to try my hand at this last name. Uh, <laughs> I'd like to make a motion to uh, approve the tobacco and holiday license for Shireen Majmira, DBA Fancy Corner Store, 432 Main Road. Second. I have a motion and a second. Any further discussion? All those in favor? Unanimous. Moving right along. Appointments and resignations. Ex Historical Cemetery Commission, three-year term, two vacancies. James L. Spears, 494 West Mellow Drive, request reappointment to April 15, 2021. Is Mr. Jim. Yeah, Jim, Jim is here. Jim, <laughs> Jim, where were you? They're in their meeting I'm behind. Them. Talking about some gravestones. <laughs> All right. Anything you want to say? You've been doing this a while. Right, that, that's correct. Is this live? Yes. Okay, so I'm Jim Spears, for those who don't know me, and I've been involved in the cemetery, Historical Cemeteries Commission, is the proper name, for a number of years, and uh, I'm not currently the co-chairman with Bob Martin, and we uh, are quite active in keeping track of cemeteries. Um, we do a lot of work at researching <coughs> old cemeteries. We were working in Wingover Farm over the weekend, and there is actually a cemetery back in there, which took a little uh, adventurous uh, bushwhacking to get to, but we don't mind that. God bless and you. I'm, I have sufficient energy and knowledge of the subject and I'm interested in pursuing, you know, for another term. Any questions for Jim? Madam President. Councilor Edwards. Uh, I'd like to make a motion to reappoint uh, James L. Spears, 494 West Mello Drive to the Historical Cemeteries Commission um, for a vacancy to end 4-15-2021. Uh, second. Motion's been made and second. Any further discussion? All those in favor? Unanimous. Okay. 
Welcome aboard Keep up again. the good work. <laughs> Thank you. And if anybody needs uh, a little bit of exercise, uh, I have some cemeteries that need to be cleared out. <laughs> <laughs> we'll never run out of cemeteries that need it. <laughs> Jim, we have a new appointment coming right up, yeah. so we're getting you some backup. That's a reinforcement. Yep. Susan Anderson, 1137 Main Road, new appointment request. Now, because this is a new appointment, have we been advertising this for it's quite some time? For quite some while. Okay. Um, so we'd have to waive our procedure in order to appoint Susan as a new request. So that would be the first. Is she here? She, she, is, she here. is here. Should we go through that thing first, yeah. then we'll wave, and then we'll. Okay. Susan, for some reason, I thought you were on the Historical Cemetery no, Commission. I'm on the Historical right. <laughs> if it's history, you know your stuff. <laughs> I, I, I don't know why I thought you were on this. Why are you interested <laughs> in being on this? <laughs> because I'm into history. <laughs> okay. right. Any questions for Susan? And, and I strongly support uh, Susan's appointment. <laughs> because she'll clean for, it. Well, she'll she'll try to make his quorum. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah. The, uh, but, uh, but also, uh, her, her group, the Historical Pre Preservation Commission and mine, are not, we overlap, but we're not. Uh, 100% overlap. We're doing the same kind of thing but with a somewhat different focus. And I'm welcome to anyone who is knowledgeable and interested in helping to preserve our historical uh, heritage. Right. Joan, did you want to? Ask? I just wanted to say that I've known Susan for quite a few years, and I fully support this appointment. She will fit in great with the with the gang and and uh, certainly she takes history very very seriously well, that's why I thought she was on this because I know how much you love history <laughs> madam president yes uh, I'd like to make a motion to waive our normal procedure second motion's been made and second any further discussion all those in favor unanimous madam president I'd like to make a motion to appoint Susan Anderson 1137 Main Road to the historical cemeteries commission for a three-year term second, second. Motion's been made and second. Any further discussion? All those in favor? Here you go, Susan. Go clean Thank some you. Congratulations. Congratulations. Get the weed whacker ready. I know Jim's going to put you to work. I'm going to go into the lit Okay, go ahead. We're going to work right now. Recycle and Landfill Committee, three-year term. There are four vacancies. Jeffrey Belisle. To Birch Street, request reappointments April 15, 2021. Jeff, you've been on this for a couple of years now, at least. Yes. Um, anything you want to say? I just want to keep going with the good work that me and uh, Mr. Edwards and the rest of the committee have been doing. Um, I know there are some issues that are going to be coming up at our next meeting um, that might be coming in front of the council if. Uh, our current trash vendor does not get his uh, act together, but um, we'll see if we can take care of that before ha the council has to be bothered. Okay. Any questions from the council? Madam President. Council Edwards. I'd like to make a motion to reappoint uh, Jeffrey Belli to Birch Street uh, to the Recycling Landfill Committee uh, for one of the vacancies to end 4 15, 2021. Second. Madam President. I just have a question. How many vacant? There's, there's four vacancies. How many people are on the committee? Right now, it's. It's a combined recycle and landfill, so we've never had the um, recycling committee before. Right. Right. Okay. Yeah. There's there's a well there's a number of people that are participating too. Like I know Councillor Hilton um, attends the meetings as well. Um, you know, we have, you know, people from the DPW department, uh, I'm sure the director will come, Stephen Reese comes, uh, he's the chair. And but they then, can't be part of the committee. No, I mean, they're all members of the committee. And then we've had um, uh, uh, Richard Guimond, he comes to the okay. meetings as well. I think he's a liaison okay. with the conservation committee, but collectively we all kind of make it work. Yeah, okay. I thought there were a lot. Yeah. Chris, you there's a, there's a lot of us, <laughs> but I, you know, there's yeah. all these vacancies too. Yeah. Do you have so. to publicize an agenda for that? Is that something you got to? Oh yeah. Oh yeah. Okay. Yeah, they're subject to the open meeting. Mm -hmm. We're typically in front of the budget committee <laughs> when the budget committee is in session. Okay. okay, so I have a motion and a second. Any further discussion? All those in favor? Thank you, Jeff. Thank See you at the next meeting. Yep. <laughs>
unfinished business, discussion and approval to advertise for the public hearing for the proposed amendment up to code of ordinance article, excuse me, six, outdoor seating, chapter six, alcohol beverage, if, including section 6-83 and 6-84 to regulate outdoor. Um, so this is the new and improved ordinance with, with the changes that, Peter? <laughs> So uh, actually, some of this came from from Jan, and uh, Jan just uh, uh, noted to me before the meeting that uh, his draft had notes on the side that uh, when it got printed through the track changes program, it didn't come out in your meetings packet. Um, but this this uh, this is a draft of that ordinance, um, and just uh, uh, Jan, do you have anything you want to add? No, I, I think Peter has suggested that the additional comments, because we didn't have time to actually work those out. Um, I found a few uh, instances of language that I thought was maybe duplicative or unnecessary that we removed that. And the biggest comment was really that uh, the reference to the DEM permit for septic systems should really apply uh, not just to establishments without their seating, but establishments. Uh, it does, though, doesn't it? It well, doesn't if it does, then we don't need it in here because it's already applicable. So I just wanted to avoid the perception that we're somehow singling out uh, establishments that have the outdoor seating um, because it has been a somewhat controversial uh, topic. There is a general requirement that um, these businesses have to comply with state laws and regulations, including those that relate to septic systems, but also all kinds of others. So. So That's something I'd like to pursue a little bit further with uh, the solicitor, but that can be done at the next, at the first hearing if you choose to advertise this. What I understand is all establishments, when, when they come for licensing, has to prove certain things, and it includes the DEM uh, with the seating, <coughs> except if it's compatible with the, the number of seating, right? Uh, you're, you're correct on that, and I think, um, Really, it could just be a formatting uh, issue where uh, taking a, a section, right now the, the list of application requirements follows the outdoor seating section. We could take that, put it in a separate section, and that way it would apply to both indoor seating and outdoor seating. Right, and because it, it really is, when you come for your license, you have to prove you have the adequate septic to the amount of seatings, and that includes whether you have an outdoor or not. Right. It's, it's just all the seating. Yeah. So it probably just needs to be in that license where yeah. when they come for a license, it's what they normally do. It's no different. Is that correct? That's correct. Okay. Madam President. What, what's the matter here? That's just the original license. Right. That would apply to the original, the original license, license or to an expansion of seats. It wouldn't apply if you're just coming and renewing the license that already exists. Right, but if they're coming in for an outdoor right, if they're, seating license, that's an expansion. that would be expansion. Unless it already existed. Unless. Well, uh, unless it was already approved for that. Right. Seating. Is that what you're saying? Yes. Okay. So, so if these outdoor seatings didn't increase the amount that they originally came for, then it wouldn't be a problem at all. Right. But if they're increasing their seating. Mm -hmm. Yes. And that's what it should say. Yes. Exactly. Okay. Yeah. Yes. Something to that effect. Yeah. And that was in the notes, but it didn't come through the draft that you got. So. Um, right. So there's no real difference because a new license would have to do this anyway. Is that what you're saying? That's correct. Okay. Yeah. So uh, just so we're clear, this is to advertise to hold the public hearing so we can talk about this again? Okay, so with that, I'd like to make a motion to approve the um, administrator to advertise for public hearing the proposed amendments to all those code of ordinances. Do we have a second? Madam President. Because I'd like a discussion. Yeah, okay. discussion. Okay. Um, do I have a second? I'll second. Okay. First of all, um, how many days do you need to advertise this? 21. Okay. So. Um, oh, no, this isn't zoning. Well, this, this isn't, isn't zoning. zoning. It's, it's not 21. Long. Licensing. It's just licensing. Okay. So how many? Ten. They're just being ten days. So we could. Oh, this is perfect. So we could do it September twenty third. Mm -hmm. Okay. Oh, wait a minute. Why not? September twenty fourth is the next one. Yeah. So fourteen no. days. You can't get in. No, you couldn't. can't get into. No. Oh, can't get into the paper. October. All right. Well. October. 
then we need to discuss end of something. October. Then we need to discuss something. October 9th. It's going to be in 10 days. Yeah. Who isn't going to be here October 9th? Come on. You're good. There's no paper tomorrow. You're good. You can do it. What about the... But Thursday would be... Yeah. You're going to push this. I have an election coming. I'm telling you this may not get in the paper for Thursday. Okay. All right. My I'll next try. problem is who's not going to be here October 9th? Up. Who's not going to be here October 9th? I don't know. Might not be here tomorrow. Yeah, Aren't you in Florida? <laughs> yeah. This farm is not here. So the October 9th meeting, yeah, we're not going to be able to have. Together, right? <laughs> um, unfortunately, I'm, I'm not going on vacation. I'm having a procedure done. But um, unfortunately, so the October 9th <coughs> Now, what we could do is have a meeting at the end of October. I, I mean, at the end of September. Or wait until the very last meeting before the election and do this. Uh, so I don't know how you feel. Yes. Uh, Madam President, uh, Nancy thinks she can. She's going to try <laughs> to get it in for the second meeting in September. Okay. If she okay. can't, then I'm we'll just. I'm kind of threatening her as to yeah. another meeting yeah. that she doesn't want to do. <laughs> if we can't, we can put it on again on the next. So it work, Nancy. I'm going to try. You can do it. I got. Three. <laughs> I know you can. Okay. Madam President. I, yes. Yeah. Yeah. Are we ready for a discussion on that? Yeah, we're still, yeah. I just wanted to have that okay. date just in case. And I know that you wanted to talk. Go ahead. Nancy. Okay, so before we have a public hearing on this, I would like to see the whole complete draft in front of us, exactly what we're going to do to these people, what we're going to force them to do. It's well, been going, well they, they, they've been doing the same businesses for years upon years, and one little thing clicked, and now we're upset and 20 businesses in town that want to have outdoor seating that they've already had or presenting outdoor seating. And I would like to see it in front of me completely done what the it town, is. what the people are going to be voting on. So we're, well, it is right in front of you. This no, you, said it, you just said it's a mess. The we don't know. Thing, no, the only thing that will change, I think, if everyone agrees with me, is that last red line, mm -hmm. a license approval for expansion of um, Everyone's reading that one. That really needs probably, I think, was suggested to take that out of there, and that it, that is what everyone has to do who's coming for new seating. Right. So new restaurants. So mm -hmm. that part is going to be stricken. Is is that yeah. what I understand? That paragraph will be stricken. It'll yeah, be you bet. moved yep. around. Uh, huh? It'll be moved around so that the application requirements, so that when you come in and make your application for new a new license and new seating. It applies whether it's indoor or whether it's outdoor, and it's, it's made to try to uh, mirror what application applicants have done already. So, to. Peter, could you do this maybe today or tomorrow, well, tomorrow or this week, and maybe um, email it to everyone, all of us, so we can see this? But the, but the problem I'm having with it is you've got some businesses that pump their systems. And this, this is the, the problem we're having is how many seats their system can hold is what I'm hearing from DEM. Um, and we don't have three different businesses do it three different ways. Some people can have as many people as they want in or out. Their systems are pumped weekly or monthly. So we're putting an extra burden on them having to put licensing in that they didn't already have. We have people with septic systems who we don't, they're, they're old in the ground and we don't know what their problems are going to be. So we're opening up a giant can of worms that I don't believe needs to be opened. Oh, as so, long as DM is approved. Right. Yeah. So but what the technique that they're doing, so it if, shouldn't be a problem. So if DEM approves, if I don't hope somebody doesn't mind me using their name, uh, the one down by the beach down here, uh, Evelyn. <laughs> Evelyn. So Evelyn's. <laughs> I, I only been here 56 oh, years. I just. <laughs> I forget this stuff. Evelyn's and no, the Black I Goose, they both Evelyn. have systems that's pumped out, so they should be exempt from this whole entire thing. Well, if the, that's, that's just my opinion yeah, on ahead, what's yeah. going on here. I just want to say again that minus. nothing that is in this draft uh, amendment to the ordinance requires anything that the state does not already require. Correct. And it would be really unfortunate if that's what we keep suggesting because it's not the case. At the same time, there are state laws and regulations that require us to make sure that when people apply for these licenses, they are in fact in compliance with state laws and regulations, including the ones that relate to business regulations. So it's basically stating what's already true. Now, does it create issues? Absolutely. 
But we can't just keep ignoring them either. What we should do is try to work with these folks and see what the solution is. And I have offered that you know, time and again. So I well, think that is really what we should focus on. And, and correct me if I'm wrong, but these folks are diligently working with, um, with DEM and to, to make this all work. But, but we're, trying to squeeze, this, we're trying to squeeze this in in a, in a six more week period to get this done. It's six more yeah, weeks. I know it's done here, but these people may not be able to open their business now because they're going to have an, an issue with this new stuff they have to do that so they didn't have to do last year. I think, but I don't think it's <clears throat> done. Uh, no, yeah, I, I was just going to ask that. Is, is this all new or is this, no, just, this is just what, you do what we've had I and they're just putting, making that change on the last yeah. paragraph? And I think that just because if that's what we've had right along, then uh, to, to I don't see a problem to, with that last line. To, okay, let, let, let Peter talk to, to kind of put the businesses at ease, we did put in a section that says mm -hmm. if if you have seating and you've been licensed, we're not we putting additional. We're not doing. Right. We're not your right. grandfathered, and you don't have any additional requirements if you have seating that's already been approved and you've gone through the process. I think the the positive aspect of this is that. When you've done licensing in the past, you've always made it conditioned upon, and you meet all other legal requirements, which um, is uh, easy shorthand. But when something actually comes up, uh, the business owner says, "Well, you know, I didn't know that was one of the legal requirements." What we've tried to do is just list out: here's the things we're going to look at, so that way we're not looking at any and all legal requirements. We've just said these are the you know these are the areas we're going to look at. If you have a new application with new seating, whether it's indoor or outdoor, put this in your application packet and we'll consider you just like we consider everybody else and just like you've always been considered. But now you have an ordinance on the book that says this is the outdoor process. seating is allowed. Yes. Right. So I just don't want to see somebody come in November, can't get this stuff done by licensing time in November, then we shut them down for the winter until they can get it done. Mm -hmm. I want anybody who's an active business right now. Not somebody brand new coming in that they have to adhere to something that we put out, that's one thing. But if they come in and they need six, eight, or a year to get into compliance, we don't want to shut them down. Yeah, and, and um, I'd like to say well, we have to have something like that out there for these folks because we can't just well, I 50 think years yeah. later come up with a brand new set of things that they can't fix immediately. And, and you're right, and I think that's why we've done the temporary um, right. uh, uh, approval in the interim. And, you can continue to do that moving forward. So I don't think you're ever going to be faced with a situation where, because of your changes, you're going to force a, a business to shut down. You don't have to do that. This is just kind of trying to put this Bring in everybody a conform it into the same page. And yeah. I understand that having have to be right. done, but I can't. Okay. I can't put my name on shutting a business down. That just. Randy, no, the way I look gone. at it, and I don't know if I'm wrong. Would you the key, like? Yeah, the key word is he said grandfathered in anybody who has it now as grandfathered in. Well, and I think grandfathered in if their seats were approved. Right. If they're approved okay. as of now, they're grandfathered in. I think but that's see the way I look at it is um, if these people come to us in November and they have those additional outdoor seatings and they're working with DAM to be compliant, then we do what we bought. Shouldn't, so shouldn't been doing. be a problem. As long as they're showing that they are working with DAM. DEM isn't having a problem because they're working with them because it's not our rules. Right. It's DEM. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So if DEM has no problem with them and they're working, then it, it's not our rule. Right. So if they come in November and they say, yes, um, I'm working with DEM, this is what's happening, we, we do what we did last time. They continue, that's how I look at it, continue working with DEM and, you, and we grant the license Madam. because they're showing that, that they are being compliant in a way. They're trying to make All right, so if we schedule a public hearing, all these folks will be able to come up and can we invite DEM so we can, because I hear different stories about DEM as well saying they don't care, they do care. Um, I would like to have DEM standing right here and say we care or we don't care, ISDS system, or somebody from DEM can't come here. Yeah. It's very simple. I know it is. DEM yeah, does not care about indoor or outdoor seating. They couldn't care less. They do care about number of seats because it has something to do with how much wastewater is generated and being disposed into the ground. That's all they care about. Okay, so they would like to make sure that people are in compliance with the regulations. It's none of our business, but we are supposed to check that they are in compliance. That's all it is. Not that we're going to say like, well, we don't think that you are in compliance. That's for DEM to say. 
And yes, it's true what the president says, that they can work with DEM. If DEM feels it's going in the right direction, it takes time to resolve. Some, some of these situations are difficult, so they are not easily solved. And we agree with that, and we'll be glad to, sell, to help and support the businesses. But we cannot, that's the one thing I want to caution again, we cannot pretend that somehow we can say that, that noncompliance doesn't matter. We don't have that authority. Right, but nobody's saying that. Well, it comes close to that, and I don't want to make false promises. Yeah, but, th but that's not what I'm saying. I'm saying that I don't want a business to have to shut down because they have a problem that DEM or th we dug this problem for these guys. No, we did we not. Yeah, we did. No, this, we was, this never existed before. I, I really, you know, I have to tell you honestly, as someone who does this kind of work, to have someone say that we're shutting down businesses. Yeah. I don't really find that very acceptable. Well, that's okay if you find it acceptable or not. This is what I talk to these folks all the time. Well, I do too. All right, yeah. all right. So President. President. let me try to. Go ahead. Okay, go ahead. I just, President. I just want to make sure because I know that the businesses had a problem before, and I just want to make sure that you're in regular discussion with them. Okay, because that was an issue, and as long as we know that, that you guys are talking to each other. <clears throat> Well, I called them and I asked them, are you guys happy with this ordinance no. that they're putting forward? And I got no. It's concerning to them. Well, then okay? at the public... And they're, they're the people that vote for me. No. That's the people who run the town. They're the people I'm concerned with. Well... They're, if they're concerned with it, then we have a concern. Let's address their concerns. I'm not saying throw it under the carpet. But let's get together. Right, let's, let's... Right, but that's what the public hearing is for. When we, when we have the proposal, then... then of course, the restaurants can come and speak to us and give us their opinion, and, and so can other citizens. But I think what, what, Randy, you're not understanding, we are not saying we're going to close you down. We're just saying the DEM regulates you, and if they're fine with it, we're fine with it. Am I right? Uh, yes. Yeah. That's, that's all there is and to it. And if you're working with DEM, and I'm sure DEM doesn't want to close businesses down either, I think this, they will be, as long as you're working with them and we don't get some notification from DEM that says they need to be shut down, but it wouldn't be us, correct? Yep, yep. no, that, that's absolutely true. Um, and, you know, there was concern, certainly was concern with some of the business owners when this first was presented. Uh, you know, they looked at the new ordinance and their assumption was, well, there's new requirements we have to be put on. Really, this, I think the best way to look at this is this is clarifying what the town is doing so that when someone comes into town, they look at the ordinance and see, well, what do I need to do to get a, vit a vittling license? It's all just spelt out what they mean by the legal requirements. Uh, that being said, to try to put the business owners at ease, we did put that grandfathering clause in there. And that's, I think that's one thing that we can say, well, we have that in there to, to make sure that we're not trying to throw something new at you and shut you down. So that's one thing. That if, if, if you get a call on that, you can point to that. The other issue is, and I think the businesses have seen how we've worked with them with this interim solution. So they know that while we're figuring out how to, how to do the town's ordinance, we're not trying to do anything that would put them down. And in fact, we're going out of our way to make sure that, that they're always going to be we always have something in place, even if it's an interim solution, it's going to be able to operate. And I'm sure some of these businesses are in, their septic is fine too. I don't, yep. right? I don't think it's all but, these businesses that are including outdoor seating that we're having a problem with. And, and the people that may have, what's the matter? I have, I think I had a phone call from maybe one business with this temporary setup. So the only Can thing I'm saying is you use the microphone. Be clear because I want to have these people coming in for applications. And it's, we gave them that kind of grandfathered in and stuff. I did have one or uh, two businesses call me, but no one specifically came in with what was, you know, required at that time. I'm just saying it's not going to be as easy as November I should think it's going to be. Not that it can't be done. I'm just saying it's right, but if, not going to be yeah. as easy. Cause and I think, if I think their seating has increased because of outdoor seating. Well, and I think, yeah, I think that's the key point, is that most of the businesses have been operating with a number of seating for a number of years. They're not changing their seatings. They're just getting renewal, and the renewal process is going to be the same for those businesses. It's only with the businesses that are new to town, expanding the seating, that they need to go through the process that's separate for the 
new or expanded application. So, but the expanded application would that be any? Is this this is the key here? Is this any? And this is what Randy's talking about. Any businesses who now have been running with the outdoor seating, but it's more seating than what the license says. They that that's what I'm asking. So, so would they have a problem with that grandfather provision? If they are already operating with seating at the time that this ordinance is enacted and they don't have any other issues, this ordinance will not treat their license as a new one. But suppose if, if their application said 20, 20 seats, and since then they have put in 20 more additional outside, now they have 40 seats. So, um, so if in the interim they expanded their seating? Yeah. Okay, so it would be. That's who Randy are talking about. Is talking. I think. Madam President, so I say so long as these people, and I'm not saying, Jan, that we're trying to shut anybody down. I just don't want to see anybody get shut. There's nobody up here who wants to shut a business out of this town. So don't don't misunderstand what I'm saying. There's a set of rules to be followed, but they've been following a set of rules, right, wrong, or indifferent, for X amount of years. And now they're going to have to come into compliance. All right, so they all have to come into compliance. But we just can't say November, th whatever the date is, 2nd, 3rd, 30th, whatever the date is, if then they can't come into compliance. We can't say, oh, well, guess what? Too bad for you. We're not going to do that. We're going to make sure that they have time to get into compliance yes. with whatever the laws are that was been overseen. I know it's not our rule, but we never, in the last 30 years, we never enforced any of this until yeah. lyrics opened up and now it's getting enforced I understand that we have a set of rules that need to be followed and let's get it all straightened out and fixed but not on the backs of these people mm -hmm. that's all I'm saying now I'm not beyond I don't want you to think that I'm saying that just we're the bunch of evil people shutting people down because it's not what I'm saying madam president yes. thank you so so I, I just want to point out here, I, I made the motion to move this to public hearing because I think that we're talking ourselves in circles here and this needs to be hammered out in the eyes of the public. That being said, if I was pushed right now and asked to vote on this, I would vote no. And I would vote no because the genesis of this discussion came from the idea that we could not allow outdoor seating and service of liquor outdoors because nothing in our code of ordinances defined the premise. Now, what we've done since then is we've opened up this can of worms where now we're talking about you have to be in compliance with this and we have to codify that. <laughs> and if you look at our code of ordinances, we as the board of licensing have the ability to issue these licenses as they stand today. All we have to do is modify the premise. And I think that we have spent an inordinate amount of time as a council and we've wasted solicitor's time dealing with this issue when from the get-go all we had to do was issue the licenses and define the premise. So with that, I mean, I'm ready to call the question at this point because I'm, we've gone back and forth so much saying the same thing over and over again. So um, we are going to get a fresher copy of the, uh, fresher copy of this, and we'll get it out to the council <coughs> this week so the council can look at it. I have extra copies. Here. Okay, and we'll have the public <coughs> hearing on September 23rd. And that's really, 24th, I'm sorry. And that's really where we hash this out. When, when the public comes and gives us their opinion and the restaurant owners talk to us. Just, just very quickly, I would like to say, just like we uh, try to do when we try to come up with the uh, interim solution, uh, I think it's important that people know who are concerned about this, that my door is open, uh, they can call me, they can come in, we can talk if they want to have a meeting with everybody in the room. We can do that again as well because I think that is important. A lot of this is sort of fear that you know something is happening that nobody here uh, really wants to see happen. So we're available. So um, do I have a motion for September? Oh, Joan, I'm sorry. I just have a few questions. You said that this is grandfathered for existing. Right. But I don't see anything in here. So if it's also it's, not a thing um, we can do. It's section. You grandfather you to break the law. If that's it's the law section the law six the law. eighty three. Uh, it says that this ordinance is not intended to prohibit any lawfully existing outdoor seating predating the enactment of this ordinance. Oh. Uh, any uh, liquor license holder that uh, lawfully maintained outdoor seating prior to the enactment of this ordinance shall be allowed to continue such lawful uh, pre-existing outdoor seating. Mm -hmm. uh, 
and then but shall be uh, required to climb with the application review process outlined. And that's in the uh, Mitchell rule too. So that's uh, the intent so of that was just to say. And that's E1C or E1B? Uh, that's uh, section 68.3, the introductory paragraph, and section. We have two, and one of them's got red, one of them doesn't. Yeah, one's the final one. Okay. Yeah, the changes. If you look at E1C, it's in uh, section 6-83, and it's also in section uh, 22-12. So, Peter, just to clarify. Uh, oh, sorry. I apologize, yeah. Councilor Shabbat. <laughs> Go ahead, Joe. Thank you for answering that. My next question is. <laughs> you only were allowed one. <laughs> oh, <God. laughs> oh, I was only allowed one. I just want to clarify, since everything is, like, underlined yeah. in this. Mm. That's true. So, in comparison to what's in the code right now. This is whole cloth, no. This is what? Uh, everything in this is no. Everything in this is new. New language. Yeah. New language. Because it okay. refers to outdoor scene. Okay, so I can understand that for um, Article 6, outdoor seating, and that's all, that's Section 6, 83 through 84. And then when you get to Article 3, vitriol licenses, you have Section 21-11 and in general. So then we have some red line that is taking out some language for takeout. This is duplicative. Oh, you know, th these red lines, um, these might be beyond red lighting a, a prior version. But in any event, all, all the language is not currently in existence. So then what follows for 20, section 21, 11, 12, and 13 is all brand new? Yes. Yep. Okay. So my next question is, this is staying specific for outdoor seating. Mm -hmm. Okay. And We've been talking about the process and what they have to do to get a license. So is there part of the ordinance that says specifically what they have to do to get a vitrine license if they don't have outdoor seating? There is not. So there's so no current. There is, there's a state law, the state, the state law, but in your actual code of ordinance, we had to put in a new section just to say these are the general, just to take what's in state law and enable it. Which is not. Which is, which is what we put in here for section 22-11, and then the rest of that. Explain so that again. <laughs> so, so for what I understand, this whole document is brand new, yes. and it specifically says outdoor seating, but it also encompasses indoor seating. Yes. The two different articles. Right. So, uh, so, and so in the past, in our current code of ordinances, we do not have any instructions in our code to say how to apply for eviction license or for a liquor license. Liquor license you did. Eviction license, no, and that's why we put the in general section in there. So is that in general though? That's what Jones asked. Oh, right. I see. So that in level. general section is new for eviction. <laughs> for a liquor license, you already had something in there. And it referred it to state law? And, and, and yes, the liquor, so if the liquor license section, all we put in was outdoor seating. That's because you have prior sections that, it, that it refer to state law. In, in the victualing license, you didn't have that, so we put that in there, which just says, in general, you know, the town council shall issue victualing licenses to all victualing houses as defined in state law. And then we reference the state law statute that gives the town the power to do building licenses. Okay, so when we put this into our code of ordinance, then we would have to, every time uh, there is a change to chapter 24, general law, title five, chapter 24, we would have to review this ordinance and change it to be in compliance with state law. Well, I, you know, that, that's a fair point. Uh, usually when we do state law references, we do it more generally for that reason. The Vittling License <coughs> Ordinance really hasn't been amended in, 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 you know, probably over 100 years, but I think <laughs> in this it's case, true. you're right, you do do a general, usually I could change that to a more general reference to say, town council shall issue Vittling <coughs> Licenses to all Vittling Houses as defined in state law without citing the specific chapter, and that way if there ever is an amendment, they put it in a different chapter, uh, we wouldn't need to amend the ordinance. 
all I'm getting at is we're now putting more detail into our ordinance than we've had before. And if before we would just say, okay, it's subject to state law and just refer that to state law and not worry about all this. So it's not that we couldn't do it in the past. We have been able to do this in the past and have done it. Whether it's indoor or outdoor seating, whether it's liquor or, or vigiling, we have done it. I think the problem was that we didn't have an outdoor, Nancy, was, um, correct me if I'm wrong, it, it was the outdoor alcohol one that was the concern. That's how it this all started. That's how it started. That's how it all started because we didn't have a license to serve alcohol outside. Is that, isn't but that we're how not creating a new license with this, or are right. we? Are we going to have a, a second license that we're going to charge no, somebody? It's no, it's because of license for outdoors so if it's as well. We said no new license. So because as we were talking about this, Nancy said, by the way, everyone, don't you remember? I, oh, we I don't recall. Have an outdoor and then, and then research was done, and it said that the only requirement for the state was they had to define the premise. With the seating. Yeah, which, okay. which that I think follows along with Joan's point is the fact that there even is a grandfathering clause in here, something that states that there are, you know, any holder of a liquor license that lawfully maintain outdoor seating indicates that at some point in time, prior councils have given businesses the ability to do this, which means we don't need this in order to do that. I don't think we actually ever gave and the ability to do that, as Nancy said. People just started. Well, I think it's it's on one specific one. licenses. And yeah, but there's some licenses we looked up that they don't have it. And I think that, you know, to the, to yeah, the point that's it. being made is that um, there's really a policy consideration about whether you want to have an ordinance that's general or an ordinance that de that's detailed. You, there's benefits to an ordinance that's that's detailed because you go and look at the ordinance and you know exactly what what it's what it's requiring you to do and what it's being referred to um, on the other hand if you have an ordinance that's general um, then you know it, it, you can I guess you could say you could treat it with a little bit more uh, flexibility or a little bit more loosely but um, you know that's really a decision for the council to decide how you so, want it to be ordered. this is what I want to do and I hope you all agree with this. This is discussion for the hearing where we hear from the public on October 24th, <coughs> and we can um, further this discussion. Everyone can go home and think more about it. The public has 10 days to read over all of this and come and question us. At that point, if we decide we just don't want it, we cannot have it. But why don't? But we have to have a public hearing on this. Now. So is that okay with everyone, John? I made the motion, so I, I, the motion. I, and I made the motion specifically because so I want to hear from all the businesses so they can come up here and back yes. me up on the point that we don't need yeah. this thing. Because this isn't a public hearing right now. And but no one is allowed to talk until the public hearing, which will be, all this is, is to move this forward. Now, are these folks going to have a copy of this before this public hearing so they can understand? They can. Yeah. This no, is no, a of the new one that we're going to make. Yeah. They're going to get a copy of that some way. Yeah, yeah. And that's going to be what the new one is? Uh, I, will, I will draft this up. Uh, I'll try to get it done tomorrow and out tomorrow. Um, and we'll have copies available yeah. in Nancy's office and, and Jan's office. It to the restaurant and we'll group. distribute yeah. it to the restaurant group. How does that sound? That sounds That's good. good. Okay. Second. Joan, I know there's something. I don't know if you had more you, questions. You seconded me a while ago. <laughs> <laughs> Joan? My, my, only, my only point to this is, my, my next question is just, do we have ordinances to cover any license that we generate and document the detailed requirements to have to apply for that license in the ordinances today it, you do have you do have certain uh, licenses you do have ordinances for not all licenses you have ordinance for some of them are only in state law um, some are in state law and they have an ordinance that kind of puts together um, the application requirements certain conditions you put on that sort of thing okay thank you so I have a motion in a second. I'm over here. Wait, um, what's the motion? The motion, the motion is to move forward to the public hearing okay. for September 24th. So then I can vote it down. And then we can all talk about it, and okay. we can get public input. So the motion was made by Council John and seconded by Joe. Uh, all those in favor to move this forward to October 23rd. Against 24th. 24th. 
24th. 24th. I keep saying the wrong date. I'm sorry. October 24th? September. September 24th. September 24th. I screwed up. Two weeks. <coughs> so it'll be next. It's Two weeks. It was four to two. It was Joan and Mandy that was <coughs> six. Yeah. Four and two is six. And this by no means means that this is passed. This just right. means that we're going we to hear public input and we are going to make the decision that night. Okay. All right. Town Clerk. Okay. Nancy wants to buy a new room. <laughs> Town Clerk requests approval to purchase new carpeting yeah. for the main lobby and good. hallways in the no. Town Hall after review of three quotes with DPW Director Rogers, permission to use funds up to 3000 13,000 from Capital Reserve, <laughs> Madam President, after further discussion with uh, DPW Director Rogers, I'd like to increase that to 14,000. Because I'm not, we're not quite sure if we run into any now problems. Have a specific venue we have three, but we're going to sit down and go over the rugs and the quality in between. But we do have three quotes. Two we received before the packets went out, which was uh, um, one from Allied for Allied from for I think thirteen thousand four, and one from Regal for eleven six, and today we received uh, another one from Amon. So we we do have three different quotes. And that would be to replace the carpeting in this lobby, including the two halls down towards the building officials and the area in front of the tax collection um, counter. My next question is for Peter. Do we have to approve what vendor we're going to? We don't no, have wait, to. Can it be subject to? Um, don't we usually approve it? Madam, Madam President, if, yeah. if this is if this is construction, wouldn't the amendment to our ordinances that we just passed mean that we have we don't have to even we don't have to approve this process, That's Nancy? Correct. You can just go ahead and do it. Yeah, this is a small this is a small purchase. Yeah, yeah, yeah but we're taking from the capital reserve. It's under no, seventeen thousand. Yeah, yeah, the transfer, transfer we need to, but we don't have to approve. Of course, we have to approve the transfer, but. But we don't um, have to know the vendors or anything. Just say, yes, this is the amount of money we want. OK. Do I have and the funds would be coming from the, the capital reserve. reserve. And I checked with the treasurer. There is still about 60000 in that account. It's what we purchased the truck for. And I mean, you can just tell this carpeting, really. I, I know it's been here longer than I have, so I'm not quite wow. sure. <laughs> well, it lasted a long time. Uh, wow, that one. <laughs> Randy, that's dangerous <laughs> comment there, buddy. All right, do I have a motion? Madam President, uh, I'd like to make a motion to grant the town clerk uh, the permission to use uh, funds from Capital Reserve account 0980-9999 up to $13,000 at her discretion for carpeting. $14,000. $14, I apologize, Nancy. Thank you. I have a motion and a second. All those in favor? Thank you. Can't wait to see it. Hey, take um, Shag. Um, could somebody, could somebody text um, Tim <coughs> and tell him around 9:30 maybe? Do you agree? Probably a little, maybe nine o'clock. Huh? Yeah. At this rate, tell him to get in his car right oh, now. I don't know. There might be other. Uh, yeah, yeah. Tell him oh, yeah. around nine. <laughs> tell him around nine. I'm sorry. That's that's for executive. Um, new business, Thomas. William Matowski, Chairman of the Fogland Beach Oversight Committee, established by the recommendation of the Conservation Commission, January 26, 2004, uh, disassemblement of the Fogland Beach Oversight Commission. Committee. Madam President, members of the Town Council, I'm here uh, tonight to bring up something that doesn't come up very often. It's an opportunity to actually reduce the size of government in the town. Uh, not for any uh, nefarious reason, but for the reason that we created this committee uh, in 2004 to do some specific things, and it basically has done everything that it was assigned to do by the council back then. And some of you may remember back when this was being done, there was a lot of infighting between boards and commissions that had responsibilities down there. We almost came to knock down, drag out fights in front of the council back then. 
Uh, this was an attempt to stop that, to get everybody to work together for the benefit of the town. And I, I'm very happy to report that it, it has worked. The level of interest back then was pretty high. It slowly dropped off. We even have last couple of years we've had trouble making a quorum because I think everything that was acrimonious, that was contentious, has basically been resolved. And if you've been down there uh, and you remember what it looked like, say, in the early 2000s con compared to what it is now, I think everybody would agree that it's a much better place, looks a lot better, and is better for the environment as well. So I just briefly wanted to say that uh, we had members from Conservation, Recreation, Harbor, Open Space, the Town Administrator, Director of Public Works, and a Neighborhood Representative, That and these people changed over time, but the ultimate goals uh, stayed the same. Uh, we did, in fact, uh, meet the ones that are on, on uh, attachment number one, uh, where it says that the uh, committee will work to come up with plans to manage the area which was done, create a proper uh, two-scale drawing. We have a surveyor, an official surveyor map of the area that's in the town records. So anytime the DPW or anybody else needs to work down there, they have that to go by. If we get wiped out by a storm, we have that to go by to recreate areas or know where things were and things of that sort. Uh, anytime now there's an application uh, to do these routine maintenance ideas, uh, we, we brought about 20 of them to CRMC and got a lot of them approved as uh, what they call FONSI, finding of no significant impact, which allows us to do them as we need to, and the ones that they felt were important that we needed to go back to them for a sense, which is what they call their permits, were outlined. So that was resolved. That used to cause no end of trouble, and people would go and do them on their own without checking with anybody. And then finally, uh, the playground. Where people remember the playground used to be on the, uh, the, the uh, north side of the road, and it had an entrance that basically dumped right into the road. And there were dunes and grass, and you couldn't see a kid, you know, one foot away from the road. It was a hazard waiting to happen. And believe it or not, we had fights over that and whether that should be moved or whether that should be fixed. And the group got together, agreed on it, moved it, and now, as people know, it's on the other side. It's fenced in. It's near where people can sit and watch their children play in the water and also see uh, what goes on in the playground and not have to worry about somebody jumping out and maybe getting hurt. So the liability issues to the town are gone. So I think everything's been done, a good job's been done, and it's time to retire uh, the commission. It was created by uh, a motion from the council as uh, amendment one shows and then uh, uh, attachment one sorry and then attachment number two is just a, an, an additional this was actually a resolution of the council a little bit later that uh, told uh, people in town how the issue of getting a sense or permits from CRMC down there would work and this would need to be revoked as well because it directs people to go to the uh, the committee which presumably would be uh, disestablished, so this, this could go now, too, and uh, uh, not misdirect people to something that no longer exists. So again, I, I think we, we've done the job. Uh, it's time for this uh, committee to be retired. As you know, we also have changes coming up on Section 54, which covers the beaches, and conservation will actually be getting out of the landowning business and turning it over to open space where it belongs, and uh, so far, so good. So. Thank you for all your work. Thank you. Madam President? Yes. Do we need to make a motion and... and we do. Okay. We do need to all right. So uh, I'd like to make a motion to um, approve the disestablishment of the Fogland Beach Oversight Committee and uh, direct the clerk or ask the clerk to draft a resolution reflecting that disestablishment and the change in the CRMC permits and all that stuff. Do I have a second? Second. Any further discussion? Yeah. Is that is that going to suffice, Mr. Solicitor? Yeah. If, if it Beautiful. Say something. Um, motion to be made and second. All those in favor? Any other? We thank them. Yes. Less government is always good. Let's go. Council will above discussion approval to advertise for public hearing for casino revenue ordinance. It's in front of you. Um, I do believe Randy wants to suggest some changes well um, the only change is I don't want to see the money uh, in 2 dash 9 2 go to the general fund um, going to the general fund you need to act, act the Congress to get money out of the general fund if something's needed so I'd like to change some wording here if it's possible I talked to the solicitor before the meeting uh, where it says 
the council may deposit the remainder in the general fund for purposes of the purposes were great I added a purpose debt reduction and I changed the council will deposit the remainder in a special fund to be used for those three um, for the three items that were listed here remain special or restricted uh, remain general Oh, yeah, 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 okay. Restricted. That's special restricted, right? special yeah. to restricted is fine by me. Yeah. I just don't want it going to the general fund because every time I mention general fund over the last 21, 22 months, it was no way. You can't touch the general fund. So we don't want to put money that where we can't touch it. <coughs> and this way here, we have, we have it coming up for a referendum. And now these, with this new proposal, we'll be able to access the money in to uh, do what was originally planned for by referendum. <laughs> My only question, and Peter, this is for you. We do have this as a charter change, mm -hmm. okay? Now, suppose that charter change goes down and mm -hmm. the, the people vote no. What, does, what happens to this, this ordinance? The ordinance will stay in place. Uh, the only difference if the charter change is not voted in, uh, any future council could repeal it or change it. But so, my question is, so why, did, why are they voting for it if we're doing it? Like, we're doing this. We're doing exactly what we want to propose the charter change to be. Yep. So by doing this, we really didn't have to do the other one. I, th I think that the, the difference would be. I, I'm just asking. I'm not arguing. No, no. I'm just, okay. No, you're, you're, you're right. You're right that it is kind of a, a belt and suspenders type of approach. Um, but I, uh, if you put it in the charter, it will stay in the charter. And, and bind the council and the town unless it gets voted on again by the electorate who agrees to change it. So right. That's, so, that's the, so that's really a little more solider yes. than this ordinance. Yep. But what we're doing is by making this ordinance and the people vote against it, then we're, we're saying, well, it doesn't matter what you vote. We're doing it anyway. And then another council can come in and change it. Mm -hmm. Is that the... That's the difference. Yeah, that's the difference. And actually, the, the one other difference would be that uh, where the charter uh, uh, amendment is more general, uh, this specific. ordinance does have some right. specific. So when if, like, so are we putting the copy for, like, if the voters vote to do it, then we do the ordinance to be more specific? You could do that. You could do that. You know, wait to see what the voters say. And if the voters say, we like this, okay, we'll implement what you, what you did. If the voters don't vote it, I guess you could look at that as saying, we don't like this idea. And, but and we then, said before they vote, well, we're going to do it anyway. So what you could do is you could take this and put the public hearing out beyond the election. Yeah, I, I just, I, I just want to try to explain this, because people are going to ask of us, like, why are you doing an ordinance and asking us to vote on it? And if we vote no, you ha already have an ordinance, so it doesn't really matter. Yeah. Well, uh, Madam President. Well, yeah. So. I, I just want to be able to explain this to people. Mm -hmm. All right, John. The, uh, the only thing I would say is that I think it would be worthwhile at least having the discussion and ha making it a matter of public record mm -hmm. for what this council intends to do uh, in the event that none of us are here after November. I mean, I think it would be nice for the incoming council to have some sort of a record of what our intentions were um, you know, after going through that process, especially in the event that it does pass by the charter and then a whole new council sits here and they say, Okay, great. Well, now what do we specifically do? We should at least lay the groundwork for them. Yeah, I, I just wanted to make sense of it, which I'm not quite sure I agree with doing it this way, but I will definitely um, listen to what people have to say and vote accordingly. But I was just wondering the process, and I wanted to understand it. Joe? Yeah, yes. I have to say something. <laughs> Okay, I just want to, because I might have missed what you said, um, Randy, you wanted to eliminate 2-92 and have all the money go to those? No. No, no, no he's striking the word general and changing yeah. it to restricted. To restricted, so, so, so it doesn't go into the general the fund. He's striking the word may and we're changing it to shall. Okay. Or will. Will or shall. The council will deposit the remainder in the... Special, or the uh, restricted. restricted. restricted for purposes of those of, the, of A everything and B? of no. A, B, AB and, and I C. added C debt C debt service debt or debt reduction. reduction. No. Wait a minute. So no, the A and B that's underneath 292. Are you crossing that off? Oh, okay. 
the no. financial ratings. Okay, so that's no. a that stays. That okay. stays and reducing cost of financial financing and associated debt and or a, a, no and B is emergency funding and you're putting a third one in. No, I don't need no, to put the third one because it's already up at the top. Oh, no C, only A and B. But the, but no. Well, no, that doesn't no, make that any doesn't sense. sense. <laughs> How? What doesn't make sense? B is either capital development or emergency funding. You're looking at the no, next section. section two. Section two. Oh, you said two ninety two. Yeah, yeah two ninety two. Yeah. Okay. So in the charter ballot question, we refer to casino gaming revenue going to debt sur debt reduction or debt service capital development. In infrastructure yeah, projects, right yeah, we, we those three, mm -hmm. we don't say anything about what's in two dash nine two. We do say the next sentence: "In no event shall any casino gaming revenue be used by the town's operating budget." So, in my opinion, anything on two dash nine two through emergency funding comes out because that was not in the charter. Uh, amendment that was will be on the ballot, right. and then 99. I mean, two dot two dash nine three should be two dash nine two. And how I see that this is different than the charter amendment is that this goes into detail on how to manage that money, and that's the important part of this ordinance. All I'm saying is, this is <coughs> very important, but shouldn't. Be. But if it passes, then we change the order. That's what I'm saying. Like I think this this is really good, but I'm just wondering, and I'm just <coughs> wondering. I'm not. And I'll make one more comment on on the last section here, the last sentence where it says the town council shall. So it goes through the budgetary process, and we go through the the budgetary process with the same process with this uh, gaming revenue as we currently do for our regular budget, municipal budget. But at the last sentence it says the town council shall approve the final allocation of gaming revenue no later than the date scheduled for the approval of the final municipal budget. I think that's where you run into an issue of what that process should be. Should it be just left up to the town council or should it be left up to the town council to put it on the FTR for voter approval. So that's where I'm sitting with this. So if you're going to have a public hearing on this, I think it's important so that we can explain to the public what our intentions are for this charter amendment and to explain this is how we see the allocation going to these three items and not going to the operating budget and then explain the process in this nine, uh, two dash nine three process of how we expect to have the people, the budget committee and the people be aware of what this money is being spent on. Because it's not, a, it doesn't just go into a black right. hole and it needs a process and this documents the process. I think this is more important to get this out in front of the public before the November election so they understand what that's our intentions are. Tool. Madam President, that's, the, that's basically what I said before. Wow. People should decide where the money's going. So, so, Randy, what do you think about what Joan said? I think what Joan said was basically everything that's on this document. But the money that, that 92 is talking about is the exit, the money that we didn't need or that wasn't spent. So this is money that's not hasn't been spent. But I don't want it to buy, buy the town for the for debt reduction, okay. capital development, and so, so this is say that we have a million, there's two hundred thousand left. Then it's going to go into these funds. So I, I, I think actually the, this ordinance, it's not perfectly in line with the charter, so it could exist without the charter. If the charter came in, obviously it would supersede it. But Jones right where the charter says, you know, you have. X, Y, Z you can spend it on, and that's what you can spend it on. You considered about having an emergency clause in there, you yep. didn't put it in, Correct. so now you're stuck to X, Y, Z. So, you know, depending, so I, I think it, it's true that certain aspects of this ordinance 
could change on whether or not whether or not the charter um, gets right. uh, amendment gets passed. Right. So, and the, and the process, you know, that that's also that's going to be in there no matter what happens because you have to have the process about how you allocate. Okay. And and, and um, I believe that in the process you don't have to use all the money. So it just stays in the restricted account until you put the town council puts forth a budget yeah, for good. debt reduction, capital development, or infrastructure projects. I, I never understood that the remainder would go into the general fund. I, I no. they would stay in these well, piggy they would to whatever you want to call restricted them. Restricted accounts. These restricted accounts. And then if we need, we can use it next year to do debt service or in the right. middle of the year, say we want to. But this makes build a road. Or, or, this makes sure that happens. Right, but but with Joan is Joan has no problem with two dash nine one. I think that's what I understand. But she wants to delete two dash nine two. Is that correct, Joan? Except for the last sentence. Except for the last sentence. Okay. No, if that shall concede of revenue be, be in town's operating budget, but couldn't we just include that in two dash nine one? Yeah, that's what you're saying. Yeah. yeah. I, th I think you could do that, and then leave turn two dash nine three into two dash nine two. Right now, uh, unless uh, unless Randy, what you're concerned about is to to say that all this revenue is deposited into restricted accounts. Correct, not the general fund. Right. We so don't want to. We could just make a general statement like we did with the no event, yeah. and just say Shall be all part. monies, all gaming rights money is deposited, will be. Deposited into restricted account. Correct for for accounts. these for these purposes. For the Correct. above. Right. For the above purposes. Right. Yep. Now, Joan, over here it says the town council shall include the proposal with the budget information. See the sentence app before what you read to us. Made available to the public and allow for public comment during public workshops, meetings, and at least one public hearing, as part of the budget process. So that kind of. That could be our town council budget process before it gets to the budget committee. So it might be this might need to be a little fleshed out a little bit more, but I think it has the basic process there that we need to bring it forward. Bring it forward to the people. Yeah, I think we need to bring it forward to the people. I just wanted I just wanted it to be explained, like what yep. this does. That's all. I'm not opposed to it. I really have no opinion. Go ahead. Sorry, John. He's, he's been waving to me for a while. <laughs> <laughs> that waves all the time. Too, right? yeah. He wasn't just going to use all your fingers. <laughs> Whoa. Um, so I was asked a little while ago to um, work with the solicitor and the treasurer uh, on an ordinance. Then we talked about the charter amendments, and then it became a little confusion, confusing whether or not we needed both. Um, we decided that we at least would draft something also because Randy was asking uh, for it so that there could be further discussion. Mm -hmm. But part of what I tried to do with that last section was not create a totally separate process yeah. that would take you know as much time as the regular process, but try to have it concurrent as much as mm -hmm. possible. So that's what we're trying to do here. Um, and then with respect to that second se uh, section, Maybe we were trying to just please too many people, but there was discussion of, um, you know, how important it might be if there was in fact extra money to put it uh, in the general fund because of the the, the financial ratings that the town has, uh, and it improves the financial rating, which then makes it cheaper to finance if you ever have to do financing things like that. And also there was discussion of let's make sure we do have, you know, money for emergency. Uh, purchases, but you're absolutely right that that was not part no. of the charter amendment as it was passed. So, but in a way, if we reduce debt, we do our capital development and not ask for that from the taxpayers and the infrastructure. Our general fund may increase. If, if that's correct, you're sure. right. Just like taxes might be correct, might go down, but might our, go general, down. Yeah. our general will probably increase also if we stop reducing all of these. Because we take from the general fund every year to balance the budget. Right. We, we should never have to do that again. Right. So if we didn't do that, our general fund would be higher and our debt, debt would 
uh, when town financial meetings would be harder to so Madam President. Uh, so do you want it oh go ahead I'm just trying to speed this along go ahead. no I just wanted to make sure and this the this is the thing I like about it is the bottom piece I do think we need the emergency funding but it's not gonna I think we need to listen to what people are saying and I think we need to get it out there because not that has that has been something I've been trying to do for over a year. I know Randy, you've been trying to do it too. It doesn't happen. I would like to hear what people say, and it's like this to me is the way we're going to do it. And I don't see any problem with if it passes, if the resolution passes, the resolution passes. That's fine. This is still encapsulating that. If it doesn't pass, we still we still have something to work on. So, I mean, and if we've got the people talking about it, that's really, the, that, to me, that's mm -hmm. the biggest thing that we need to do, get it out there and get people talking about it so we, we can hear it. So do you want to move it forward as is for the public hearing, and then during the public hearing we can tweak it, or do we want to tweak it now? I, I, could, uh, yeah. I could draft um, something along the lines that, uh, that Joan was discussing. Mm -hmm. As long as we all agree with that. Yeah. Right. And, and you could even do. Well, you know what I'm saying. Like <laughs> we, we could put you could put two drafts, one as it is and one as discussed, and um, you know you could put them both at, on the public hearing, and both would be a, available in the clerk's office, and you could have a vote that night. But, or if you just want to send the one that Joan was discussing. I'm okay with either one. We could just send this one forward, and then Joan, during the public hearing, That's true. we vote, mm -hmm. we hear what everybody said. No, Joan? no, because Brandy also said he wanted to make, he wanted to change it, it to it restricted bit. fund. So what do you think, Brandy? So, yeah, so, like yeah, but Joan wants to get rid of that whole thing. Yeah, I'm, like, I'm okay with that too. Go ahead, Joan. So can can we just? So what I would propose is two dash nine two. Be changed to say instead of other use of casino gaming revenue, be renamed to be restrictive accounts. Mm -hmm. Follow that with the casino gaming revenue will be, be deposited into restricted accounts. Period. So Eliminate okay. that whole section, but include after that. In no event shall any gaming revenue be used in town in the town's operating budget. Period. Perfect. Should we put restricted accounts as listed above in 2.2-91 so that we know what the restricted accounts are? Yeah, but that's limiting us to those three. We just put right, restricted. But we, we, but but that's, we are limited to. Yeah, we are. We, we don't need, those three. we don't actually need three separate accounts. We need a, one, one restricted account from which the <clears throat> only things we can pull the money from to, is, has to fall into this category. So into so. a restrictive account. Yeah. Yeah. Period. Period. Okay. And, and up here it says what we need to spend it on. And the only thing I would change on 2-93, as I really two. have a three. Oh, change. Three. It'll be yeah. three. The, I have a problem with the last sentence. So why don't we just eliminate that sentence and put? I would recommend the town council shall approve the final allocation of gaming revenue no later than that, uh, and at the end no later than allocation of gaming revenue slash exp uh, expenditures um, <laughs> so this council. is the last section and and what's currently 292 the allocation, allocation of so gaming revenue lit why not just the town council shall approve the final allocation of gaming revenue period strike the rest or you could put no later than the date of the approval of the town council budget because that's that's a date that you have in there and you're yeah. yeah right so just say your town council yes. budget and, and you'll, you'll approve the revenue by that date the approved town council budget okay Joan did you still want an expenditure in there it is um, the pod. Um, would you object to putting on that ABC at the top uh, emergency funding, or we can't do that can't because do of that. we can't do that it? Was not, that was not what was added at, at the expensive. public right. hearing on because the that was, ballot that questions. That was a, 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 a concern when we were I doing agree. that. It never got put in, but. Um, yeah, but we, we didn't vote. Yeah, we, we never got it. Right. On the other hand, if we have more money in the general fund, you know, that could be something that people might 
be able to, could, that could go into an FTR proposal, or, right? You or could if, say we want to. You put, could if you wanted yeah. to, yeah. 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 So, so we don't, in the process. So we could do it. Councilor yeah. Shabber, are you yeah. finished with your yeah. amendments to this? And I would. Yeah, that. Um, so um, I would somehow like to also include and uh, be voted on at the FTR. Yeah, because we're put, putting approved municipal budget, which will be then voted at the FTR. Mr. Solicitor, well, no, you got all so that? We're presenting so. this to the budget committee, so are we? No, no. No, no. Okay. None of their business. No. That's what I'm asking. Okay. Right. We're presenting it to a lot of folks, mm -hmm. but that's why it says shall approve the final allocation, but we still want to have the voters approve it. Yeah. Which will be then approved. At and at so, and subject to uh, final voter approval at the FTR. Got it? That's something you said earlier. So. No, this is, that's why we did it now. Yeah. Wait, I, guess wait, wait. So then the, I guess the question would be that as far as um, electoral petitions, but that's if, the charter, if the charter amendment passes, uh, those funds are restricted, the gaming revenue funds are restricted to those purposes. So if it's voted at the FTR, that would assume it's going to be subject to um, change electoral petitions. Yeah, it yeah. should be. So mm -hmm. that, that, that could open a can of worms. No, because if they say yes, you can do this with it, and then why? Then why do we? We that's like getting a double approval, because we said we're going to do that. Because if that, yeah. then if the FDR said, you know, then you're saying if the council said, say no. okay, here's capital and here's here's the um, debt reduction and here's the infrastructure, then we at least have to have uh, a a approval. Uh, after a public hearing. Hmm. It, that's it. Approval by us. Oh, the, that's, the, that's council. Already. the town council <coughs> shall include the proposal with budget information made available to the budget and allow for budget public comment. So really, Joan, you could take that whole last sentence off. And you, you could also you could also say uh, approved at the approved town council budget um, and incorporated into any uh, FTR budget proposals. Because that way, whether it's an electoral, no. no. I think that's what we want. I think no. I think that final, that last sentence has to be taken off. Yeah, I have a problem with that last sentence. Just so we if, could if we could move forward without the last sentence. Right. Yeah. yeah. If you Strike the last sentence. Take the last sentence done. off, then it's safe. And, we're have and then if we have a public okay. hearing, then we can work out yeah. final details. Yeah. But Love I think it. the last. The last sentence is just. Not. Okay. Gets me. Yeah. Okay. Matt but otherwise, it. it's a great job in, in putting together a process. <laughs> That's all I want. <laughs> <laughs> no, seriously. We this did change a little bit. Yeah. <laughs> Sorry, I'm a little picky. Madam President. No, no, it's good. Uh, we didn't all really right, change so much. you have all that? I do. Okay. And Actually, you will get that to us, and the public hearing will be when, guys? Oh, Actually, oh. I think John was oh, going to so. propose a motion yeah, that documents um, all this, right? Yes. Yeah, so. Uh, I'd like to make a motion to uh, approve the advertisement for a public hearing for the Casino Revenue Ordinance as amended by Councilor Shabbat. Now, my question is, no. This little no. ordinance you think we want to send that advertisement out. But when is the public hearing? That's what I was getting at, guys. That's part of your motion. When do you want this public hearing? Do you want to do it on September, September 24th again, or do you want a special one for this? September the 24th. Yeah, that's going to be, that's, be, that's a, gonna be a huge night. Do you want to do these? That's, that's, so that's 10 days. Well, September 31st. Or you want to make it? Joe, I was thinking October uh, or uh, September 32nd. There you go. I'm for that. At, <laughs> at 11.09 p.m. Second so meeting in October. Can we do October? October 29th. How about October 29th? So why don't we do... Is that Halloween? No, 31st is. Okay, so the 
29th. October 29th. Nancy, you find a home for it. As long as you can advertise for it. How about October 1st? I'd say October first. <coughs> no, no, no. We don't want it. No, we don't want. We don't, we don't want, want to jam all of this. Right, because yeah, there are changes. Want, yeah. to September thirty second. <laughs> October, October first, which is our off Monday. Um, I am on vacation, but I probably will be be back by that time. I will likely not be here. It won't be here. Okay. But I will. Be back. Likely. I'll make it in that time. But not set in stone. All right, so Nancy, why don't we do, we do that one? Do you want to do both of them that night instead of making it part of our, our regular meeting? Mm -hmm. We'll do the restaurant one in October 1st. Okay. And we'll, yes, you're right. We'll probably be able to give Canada. And I, I'd, I'd like to give uh, Councilor Hilton a chance to look at this at and look at that yeah. process and um, uh, make recommendations on it. So we'll right. be speaking English. Yes. So the first will be the, the we, that one. So okay. the first is going to be a special meeting. Yes. And we'll probably have some stuff we need to put on there anyway. For this, so far, it's just this casino. Bubble. And if anything comes up, we'll have to yeah. So that, seeing I have this meeting too, if the other meeting looks too big, maybe I'll stick a couple of things on there. So, so I, I second John's motion. Okay. For October first. Okay. October the first. Okay. Motion to made and second. Any further discussion? All those in favor? Unanimous. Okay. Uh, the Cassid Cemetery Commission discussion and approval of amendments to the cemetery rules and regulations. I'm sorry, John. I was supposed to request they move it forward. Oh. Oh, why did you remind me? I'm Madam President, I'm John Christo, and this is another member of the commission, Bob Sodoma. Uh, we've, uh, we're revising this handbook for the Cemetery Commission. The one that we go by right now was approved by the council on 29 September 2009. So what we've done around 2017 in July, we've the commission has approved some amendments, and I hope you guys have the, the papers there. Yep. And recently, we have approved some amendments uh, regarding the grant for burial and so forth at our, one of our latest meetings. So what we're asking is approval of the council for these amendments that you see in front of you. Now, do you want to go no, line um, by line? We can, if you look at the red lines, it's probably easier to do. Well, we all got this. And this Oh, solicitor has looked at and Nancy yeah. sat down with them at a yeah. meeting yeah, and went over all of these. Well, actually, Joan was our liaison way, way back. She started this. Joe was a council. He was a, uh, a member of the commission. Then he became our liaison. And we submitted these amendments to, to Nancy. Nancy did a good job. And, and she, Peter. Yeah, well, Peter was the one at the end for the acknowledgment, the last one on the rules and regs, purchasing acknowledgment. And that was uh, addressed by Peter. Does anyone so, have any questions? Why don't we do it that way? Basically, what we, do, what we did was we, we removed, or we'd like to remove the word deed mm -hmm. and um, make it a burial rite because deed is a little tricky. When somebody says they deed, they think they actually own the property. And what they're actually doing is buying the right to, to be bury. buried in that. In that, in that Town owned cemetery. Um, that was the biggest thing. And then we um, also would like to put in another rule which basically gives the commission the right to, trying to find it here, the right, if a person is buried in a wrong grave by accident, he does the right to. Transfer the burial bright rights from one plot to another plot. Um, we can leave it at that. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> We're going to leave it at that. No, not the bus. Well, the one that meets the criteria that we set. Yes. And that's in Rule 12 of the Rules, Regulations, and Purchasing Acknowledgement page. And that particular document, which goes 
Yeah, it, it, we have 12, and then Peter's got the purchasing acknowledgement. And that particular document is signed by the by the whoever's purchasing the grave. They keep a copy, and the town keeps a copy. So if they have any during the, during the course of their lifetime, they have any, if they do anything wrong, we can go back to them and say, hey, look, this you signed your name on this. So that's our legal document to say, hey, look, you've signed it, you're going to abide by the rules. And that's it. I have a question, just for the attorney. Is it legal to change it, what they did? Yeah, this, this it's is all true. good. Okay, good. So then I'm good. If you're buying the plot ahead of time, you see the rules, you sign yep. it according to the rules, you buy it by what the rules are. Cool. Yeah. Okay, I just have a question. <coughs> is there any type of transitional period or um, because right now what people have in their hands is called a deed and future sales will be called um, rights of burial. Uh, rights of burial. Uh, granting uh, burial rights to the so for those people who have deeds should there be anything in here that says any current deed would be considered a grant of burial rights in the future uh, you know I think yeah I, th I think putting that language in could probably be good for uh, clarification's sake um, any deed that's currently out there, it's still, a, you're not buying the land, you're buying the burial rights. Correct. And the change in the language was for clarification, but I think adding that language would also uh, Will you clarify. Well, I think you, you tried to do that uh, when you have on number 12 of the um, rules regulation and pur mm -hmm. purchasing agreement acknowledgement. You have in 12 from here on known as burial rights. I think that's you, oh, you yeah, yeah. had an intention to do that, but I think it would be more crisp, more uh, clear if you say for any current or existing deeds will henceforth be called grant of burial rights. That's a good point. Uh, we'll just add that to we, we could we could put that in. Uh, you could grant that with that uh, sentence in conditionally, and we put that in. Any other questions? And if, if it could be added to 12, that would be good. Is that who's going to do this? Peter. Peter the lawyer. Gonna, it's always the lawyer. Gonna do it. Peter's going to do it. Peter's going to do it. Give it to Nancy. Then Nancy will give it to me. Okay, okay. fine. Yeah, and, and then the. Um, good question. So great job, guys. This is yeah, really good. You guys are good. Um, on the lot purchase document, um, under you, you hit all the deeds except for yeah. town right. treasurer affixed seal to yeah, deeds. Yeah, and all the deeds will be it's throughout the handbook. Out. I'm going to have to go throughout the handbook and look wherever it says it because I noticed reading parts that were not. We only gave I only gave you the pages that were going to be changed. Okay. But I did tell John that I'll work with him. We'll go through the handbook and align everything up a little better. Make sure it's all the same fonts and stuff. And then, then I think and it's change very important. Any and reference or any the, person uh, having a current deed are you no know, are henceforth um, uh, grant of burial rights. So I think if you cover that in one place, then you can over time change the word deed to grant burial rights. And I and I have one last, just one last thing. Um, on the transfer of burial rights, um, under the ten, uh, you have uh, where it says town clerk, and you have items one copies of transfer uh, certificate of transfer two three. There's like a extra line there, three completes A. So that just needs to be deleted. And right. the item five and six mm -hmm. need to be renumbered to four and five. Right. We're gonna go through, that's actually yeah. from the handbook page. I'm gonna fix it up. Yeah. Okay. But otherwise, great well, job. This will <laughs> resolve a lot of, um, uh, give a lot of clarity to the situation with yeah. deeds yeah. as really a grant of burial rights, but great job, guys. Madam President. Yes. <coughs> I'd like to make a motion to approve the amendments to the cemetery handbook rules and regulations, including the amendments as uh, brought to light by Councilor Shabbat. Second. Good. Um, okay, any further discussion? Motion to make second, all those in favor? 
Abram. Good job, guys. By the way, if you want to get moved up, you just tell me. I'll, I'll well, stick to it. Well, he didn't tell me. He told me. I'll say. <laughs> Just a quick one. I don't know how else to do this. I'm passing around uh, something that responds to what was in the minutes about the last meeting where Brett Pelletier made reference to a report that seemed to confirm that with respect to the Old Stone Bridge abutment project, the project was sort of on track in terms of cost, I think. Uh, yeah, Councillor, yeah, you, you had asked for that. So this is that particular uh, report that confirms that we are at about what we were uh, as of early August at about 80% of the, the funding and the cost. Thank you. Town, what's your announcement? I'm going to do it 20 seconds. Town Clerk. Just that the primary is going to be held on Wednesday. Um, districts 3306 and 3307 are combined and at the high school. The polls are open from 7 in the morning to 8 at Every night. Poll that's open. Um, 6 and 7 are combined right. and at the high school. Right. Uh, by the general election, we hope to get back to the amical. Um, also, I just want to make a comment that the council did allow me to use $6,000 for a temporary clerk. I've now been informed that the Board of Canvas clerk cannot work on the election because she is a candidate. And so we are really going to be struggling in that office, which is why I wasn't in favor of a lot more meetings. However, um, I'm going to try to increase that temporary work because she's working out very well. I'm going to try to increase her hours a little bit. I'm going to have to pay her a little more. So if I extend over the 6000 a little, um, I'll come back before the end of October okay. if no one has objections. Thank you. I skip over town council announcements. Are there any town council announcements? Uh, just um, if you would approve this, I would like to reach out to the Tibet and Prevention Coalition and invite them to uh, provide us with an update. Uh, sure. I want to reach out to uh, Jenny uh, McNamee and uh, Rebecca Elwell. They did a great presentation to the school committee uh, and I'd like them to do the same for the town council. Could you just get back to me to see if what meeting they can make it and we'll just yep. put it on. Or send a request to me. Now that so. I know we don't have an October yeah, I know. Mm -hmm. 9th, okay. so. But there's an October 1st. But there is an October 1st, <laughs> so I could always true. do it then. <laughs> what pain? Okay. John. Uh, did you get everybody? Okay. All right, Madam President, I'd like to make a motion to go in a closed executive session. Town Administrator 4246-5A2, Collective Bargaining IAFF. Second. Yes. 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 And continuing in closed executive session, solicitor 4246-5A2, potential litigation. Second. Yes. 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 And continuing in closed executive session, town solicitor 4246-5A2, litigation, Tiverton v. Lee Shore Realty et al. NC 2016-0462. Second. Yes. 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 And continuing in closed executive session, solicitor 4246-5A2, litigation AG versus Town of Tiverton, or Tiverton Town Council and Councilor LeBeau. Second, yes. 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 